Hi guys, welcome to the Epic Aesthetic High Intensity Training Vlog number two. Kicking off legs with calf training. They're an obvious weak point for me and if anyone has a weak point, put them at the start of your workout and that way you will be able to hit them while you're fresh and hopefully stimulate the most development. I'm doing a superset between seated calf raise, eight to 15 reps and standing calf raise, eight to 15 reps using a 4-2-4 cadence, which as you can see is slow and controlled and has a two second static hold at the top of each and every rep. Um, this superset combo is something I'm trying, which I borrowed from a Marcus Reinhardt high intensity training DVD. If you're not familiar with Marcus Reinhardt, um, Google him, look him up on Facebook and YouTube. Um, he's pretty much the guru for high intensity training in this current era. So going straight between the two exercises as fast as possible um, and using a complete and full range of motion. So I'm hoping that in the next few months you'll see my reps and weight tick up steadily and that should precede an increase in size for my lagging calf muscles. I'm always a little bit hesitant to give calf training advice, um, especially when they are not very big at all, but it seems to be a common problem for a lot of people to develop their calves. So whether it's a case of my genetic limitations or just my work ethic over the years, um, I'm not really sure, but I'm starting to put them first, give it my all, and I'm hoping for some progress. Okay, the third exercise is the leg extension. Um, I'm doing leg extensions before my compound movements for legs in order to pre-fatigue the quads um, because they're often the lagging body part um, for me. So again, although they're after calves, they're essentially first in the rest of my leg routine so that I can encourage them to grow at the same pace as my hamstrings. Um, what you're seeing here is what's called negative training. I've already completed a set of 8 to 15 reps to failure um, before this video started and at the point where I could no longer raise the weight under control for 4 seconds, my gym partner and lovely wife Zara has taken over and helped me raise the weight for the positive part of the lift. I hold it for 2 seconds at the top and then I lower for 4 seconds under control until I'm no longer able to execute the static and negative um, with correct form. So it's a good little technique to um, take the set beyond failure, but please use it sparingly. Okay, next exercise is the front squat. I'm deviating from my usual controlled cadence of 424 and going a little bit quicker. The reasoning behind this is with your heavy compound movements like squats and deadlifts, um, you load up the spine quite heavily um, and if you get stuck in awkward positions um, with your lower back with heavy weights and you're moving too slow and you sort of run out of um, control of the muscles around your stomach, you can put your back in a pretty compromised or dangerous position. So I just like to keep the weight moving a little bit quicker than normal, but still I'm not exploding out, out of the ground. Um, I'm not dropping to the floor. So the idea here is slow and controlled. You just don't have to be as um, exaggeratingly controlled as you might see with my regular exercises. Uh, one set, six to 10 to failure is sufficient to induce growth here. Now this exercise here, the leg press is wonderful for high intensity training. It's very safe, you're locked in tight. Um, four, two, four with the form. So go ultra slow here and really take advantage of the uh, the safety of a machine, although don't assume they're absolutely safe, you can still uh, hurt your lower back here if you retract your legs too far and bend up at the lumbar region. But under control, lower the weight for four seconds, push the weight back up for four seconds, and what this will do is absolutely kill momentum in the lift, 
And if you've never done leg press like this before with a slow form, um, you're going to be introduced to a world of extreme pain. As you can see from my rather awkward, distasteful facial expressions and head movements, I'm not having a fun time whatsoever. But such is the case with gym training. When you're not having a fun time, you're often going to induce the best gains. So really just try this if you've never done it before. And I um, guarantee that a slow form on the leg press um, will make your quads absolutely scream. You'll have difficulty driving afterwards and you'll hate stairs. So one set to failure, eight to 15 reps should be sufficient to see you grow. I don't use intensity techniques with these exercises because the load on the spine um, can be dangerous and um, you don't want to be trying to go beyond failure um, when your back's in a compromised position. Okay, here is the seated ham curl. Um, unfortunately, this week I did not put enough weight um, for the exercise and I ended up failing around the sort of 25 rep mark. Again, that's not really going to help induce a whole lot of growth with reps that high. It's just not enough stress on the muscle. So next week I need to up the weights and try and fail in that 8 to 15 rep range as I've prescribed. But just noting the technique here, pulling it down for 4 seconds, holding it for 2 seconds and really squeezing that hamstring muscle in the contracted position and then let the legs go up for 4 seconds so that the hamstring is in full control and you're never letting momentum or gravity take away from stressing your muscle and inducing growth. Okay, the video is at an end. Often I'll do some abs at the end of this, but I don't see the need to film them every week, but I will from time to time. So please like and share my video. Make sure you subscribe, and if you have any questions, please comment.